Good evening, Doc Severson here for the Theo Knight Report for Tuesday, February 13th. All right, we'll start tonight with the S&P futures again with a monthly, weekly, daily. And if, if you look at this chart and the level of exhaustion that we had on the monthly and the weekly, which frankly have never been this high ever before, we've never had this level of exhaustion simultaneously on the monthly and the weekly for as long as we have. I mean, this was um, truly a record rally that we've had in terms of how linear it was in that final parabolic tail. Well, that's all in the past now. What's happening now? Well, whenever we have markets that go like this, whenever we have markets that go just absolutely ballistic like this and reach this level of exhaustion, what is necessary for them to achieve stability again. Well, one of three things can happen. Either the market, in this case, can go sideways, it can go down from where it came, or it can continue going slightly higher like this in a very granular fashion. So of those three options, actually the very fastest way to recharge a chart and basically hit the reset button for this, whichever direction that is, is for it to go back in the direction from which it came. Because that is the most non-linear response to a linear trend to the upside like this. So actually going back down very violently recharges the chart in record time. And this is exactly what's happening right now. So I look at a chart like this and I say, it's doing precisely what it needs to do right now to prepare itself for the next phase, whichever that is. And so what we're looking for is for this market to remain range bound in a very large range with big swings back and forth inside of this range for probably the next three to four months at the very least before it's going to go on its next journey, whether or not that's to the upside or whether that's to start to build into an actual trending bear market to the downside. Now, which way is it going to go? Frankly, I don't care at this point. I don't care. That's too far out for me to worry about. All I care right now is that we're going to be in a relatively high volatility environment inside of here for quite some time. This is the normal pattern of what we see. And why is that? Well, it's caused by too many people on one side of the boat getting thrown overboard alternately. So what you saw over the last few days as we look in on the daily chart, let's think about the emotions that people have gone through over the last couple of days, right? So we've been waiting and waiting and waiting on this dip, the dip that never came, the dip that never came since the election over a year. And it's gone further and further. And finally, we got into a market, which is FOMO market, right? Fear of missing out. So finally, after all this time, traders got a dip that they were able to buy and it got all the way down to the 200 day moving average. Perfect, right? Checks all the boxes for the type of dip that a sideline bull would want to enter. Well, guess what? The market knows how strong your hand is. And if you've got all these weekend bulls that have been waiting forever to buy into this market, sitting on the sidelines, jumping on that first dip, how strong do you think their hand's going to be? It's going to be extraordinarily weak. And the market will find that out because they're going to be the first ones to bail on those longs. And this is why we had such a weak response to the first bounce up here. And in fact, we even had to retest this dip because it was testing the resolve of all those weekend bulls and it found them to be extraordinarily lacking. And that's why markets move. Markets move because of pain. Markets will find out who has got the strong hand and who's got the weak hand. So now what's going to happen? Well, it was actually good that we got that kind of tweezer bottom double test in there. And what that does is that buys a little bit of time. And so right now we're getting these really torturous days. And I, I warned you guys about this, is that this is going to be really difficult. You're going to go back and look at this chart at some point in the future and you're you're going to say to yourself, or somebody's going to challenge you and say, well, why didn't you just buy the dip there? Boy, that was the most obvious dip in the world to buy into. And you're going to say, but, but it wasn't that easy. And it's not that easy. I mean, look at the way that this thing moves. I mean, you look at this and you say, oh, well, there's three nice green candles. Right. Try trading through those because each one of these days, it felt like everything was falling off the cliff. 
today felt very, very heavy. We were range bound today throughout most of the morning session and into the early afternoon before we finally got some buy programs hitting the tape and pushing this thing up. But it's going to test everybody's resolve all the way through. No longer are we going to have these days like we've seen for the last couple of years where we have a little bit of a gap down and then all of a sudden we get a big short covering rally into the into the uh, second hour and then we just go sideways the rest of the day. That's not going to happen going forward. It's going to test the resolve of each and every trader as to whether they truly want to be long. So I've studied these types of formations at length and typically what happens now, again, every moment in the market is unique, but typically what will happen with these moves is that we'll see some type of move back up, at which point everybody will say, ah, oh, well, it's heading higher again. That's it. That's it for the pain. Right. And then everybody gets complacent again with those weak hands. And then we're going to come up to some level. And uh, typically what I've done before is I've looked at the fibs for these types of levels and usually somewhere around 50 percent to maybe as high as 61.8 percent of the initial swing down will be retested. And again, every everybody at this point will just be in total acceptance and thinking, oh, this is it. We V bottomed and we're heading higher for the year. Terrific. And then what happens is the second leg kicks in. And this is truly where the resolve comes in because this will come in out of the blue and perhaps this will happen right around the same time that the Fed decides to raise rates again, which of course would be sometime out in March, right? So this is just figurative. But I believe that there's a strong possibility that we're going to get another test of the lows. So the, the goal here is going to be is that we're going to ride this thing up as far as we can. We're going to be selling call spreads above the recent highs, above the recent highs. We've already sold some put spreads down in this area, which were way down there at the 220 level. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of traders make is that down in this level, they're selling call spreads maybe up at this level up here and they form they form a lot of bait and this is one of the reasons why we do get the rise in here because all these short deltas get hedged and then it shoots the market higher as everybody starts to add those hedges and then eventually those get lost and then eventually we head lower so we've seen this movie before there's a pretty high probability that we're going to be retesting the lows at least once over the next few months. And as we've seen before, usually it takes about at least a month or so before the first major retest gets kicked in. So in the meantime, we're going to be looking to sell call spreads on any rally back up. That doesn't mean that we can't get another retest of the lows or maybe even an undercut right now. That would be an extremely bad sign if you're a bull because normally a test like this will hold for at least a month. And if this rolls over again, that tells you that the market is already starting to anticipate higher rates and they don't like it. So in the meantime, what we're doing is we can actually, uh, during this swing, if there is anything setting up, we can play what are called in-out spreads, which are neutral call spreads, which neutralize the effects of Vega, which is that volatility crush that just about everything else suffers from as implied volatility comes back in on the bounce back up. So if we're going to pl be playing call spreads, that's the way we're going to do it. The only challenge with this during these times is the volatility skew can make these a little bit more expensive than they, they than we want them to be. But that's certainly one thing that we can play. And then as the price comes up to here, we're going to start to load up on those volatility hedges again that we're so fond of. All right, folks, that is it for today's report. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.